this is going to be a video about the aftercare for the Satsuki azaleas. I don't often do many videos or complete videos about Satsukis because I always just pick on topics that uh, are broad and general, but perhaps I should do something more specific. And I couldn't be more specific than doing the aftercare of Satsukis. These Satsukis are from Japan because we can't grow them from young in this country. We can't get them with trunks that thick in the short space of time that we have available. So these are all about 30 or 40 year old trees, at least, maybe more. So they're all different varieties like this beautiful one, which has got red flowers, pink with white stripes, white flowers. And that one, the grower has put the name on it, is called Kotobuki Hime. Uh, this is another unusual one. And this one, let me just see the name, is called Eozora. Eozora. So they all got different names and they are flowering a bit late because this is the first uh, couple of days in July and they're still flowering. And they're flowering because they were in a refrigerated container for one month, so it set them back a little bit. But no matter, they will flower. So here they are, all in beautiful, beautiful condition. So how do they get them so beautifully trimmed, the pads so well formed? I think we are a bit lazy. We don't prune it hard enough. After flowering, we need to prune them quite hard. Most of what we do is just deadheading. I will show you the deadheading tomorrow when I have one of our interns here doing the work. So this is a flower uh, that has finished on this tree. Can you see? It's a massive old tree. And when the flowers are finished, we just go around and we deadhead it like this. When I get a chance tomorrow, I'll show you in more detail what we do. So this is the first step, just deadheading. So, so much for this little uh, bit of a video. We will do more tomorrow. So today I'm going to show you the different types of pruning that is done for the Satsuki azaleas and pruning in particular after the flowering. As I said in the previous little clip, these azaleas are flowering. This is the early part, uh, 5th of July. And you must be wondering why they are flowering late. This is because they were in a refrigerated container for eight weeks in transit from Japan. So the trees were in suspended animation. Normally they flower in the middle of June, uh, right up to the end of June or early October. But many of these trees are only just starting to flower. But next year, hopefully it will revert to its normal cycle. If we look at these, pads, what we call the pads, you see how meticulously trim they are. And the pads are flat and very tight and the shape is perfect. You can see the shape, you can see all the branches, all the twigs. If you look at that one at the back, the pads are not so pronounced, but the tree is very healthy. Many people do not know how to prune azaleas. All they do at the end of the flowering period is simply deadhead the flowers. So I will now pass the camera over. So what they do after flowering is simply go around. You remember me doing the video about the maple as a chicken plucker. This is no more than doing chicken plucking. Plucking the feathers like that. Go around, just pluck the uh, flowers like that. Some of these trees, especially the big trees, they must have a thousand or more flowers. I never bothered to count, but it would be very interesting to count how many flowers exactly they have. Because some of these trees are so heavily laden with blossom that it is almost a complete ball of mound of flowers. So azaleas, of course, are grown mainly for the spectacular flowers. In Japan, there are these specialist Satsuki Azalea uh, associations 
Many of them do not consider themselves as bonsai people. They are Satsuki people first. So there's a lot of rivalry between these different groups. But bonsai nurseries do grow azaleas as well. I'm showing you on one of these because this is one that we're about to do. I will just interrupt the procedure and show you this one here. This one here has already been deadheaded. So you see how neat and tidy it looks. And if I can just show the camera, this is my volunteer, Agatha, Hello. who's here for two months. So she has done this one. Yeah. So very good job. You've done extremely well and it's meticulously done. And I stopped her doing it because I said, I must show the viewers how it is done because many people do not understand how it is done. So let's get back to this. And so the first bit of the job is simply what we call doing chicken plucker procedure. But we go around like that and rub all the flowers off. You notice I'm not using scissors. Some people meticulously go through one scissor at a time, one flower at a time, and then they will try to deadhead it one flower at a time. That, honestly, you can do, but it is a waste of time. You don't go around taking each dead flower off with the scissors. No point doing that. No point doing that. It is wasting time. Time is precious. So don't waste your time doing this. Just go around. Don't be rough, you know. If you have rough hands, maybe don't go rough. Just, you can just gently pluck this. The trees are quite resilient. So you're just literally deadheading. You call this deadheading. Just pulling the flowers off this way. Now, what would happen if you didn't do it? Now, in nature, you are not going to get a thousand gardeners going around plucking every single flower off. In nature, the flowers just drop off on their own. They just drop off. Some of them may smother the leaves, but the new leaves will grow. So, left to their own devices, they will still survive. Except that bonsai is such an artificial thing that we have fussed so much that we want to get everything perfect. So, as I say, if you didn't do this, the new leaves will push the dead flowers off but it will look unsightly. And because you want everything looking neat and clean and tidy, we want to assist it by doing like this. This is a very good example of a tree because I have deliberately left it unpruned because I wanted to show what needs to be done. Because with azaleas, apart from being a specialist tree, there are so many different types of pruning. In case you start getting worried, let me say that there are three basic types of pruning with Satsuki azalea. Unlike other bonsai, it's slightly different. So there is what we call heavy pruning, where we prune back to the structure. Heavy pruning. And there is what we call light pruning. What I showed you on this, this is called light pruning, where we only deadheaded the flowers and then cut the flower stalks up and didn't let the flower, dead flowers produce any seed. So we remove the dead flower completely. So that is called light food. Now I'm going to show you the different types all on this one tree. Normally you would do one of those three procedures on just one tree. That means if you want to do light pruning, do the light pruning to the entire tree. If you want to do heavy pruning, then just do heavy pruning to the entire tree. Okay, I won't just spend all the time showing you how to do the chicken plucker arrangement. So, there is some element of wiring needed. So if you wanted to extend the tree to grow with a longer branch, then you could wire that out. But you don't do that. But you still need to maintain the shape. So with light pruning, you just make sure that the flower buds are taken off. And you can, in fact, take some of the leaves off. But you can even take all the leaves off and leave it like that. So that's called light pruning. Satsuki azaleas bud back very easily. They are extremely vigorous growers. So even doing that, light pruning, you will get new buds forming. So this is light pruning because I'm only pruning the ends. I'm not pruning into the heavy branches. And then this one probably I could 
wire it flat like that. Now these are what we call the suckers growing from the trunk. We don't want that because they're not part of the original design of the tree. So these we have to take off. Even this one really doesn't belong there. So this we should take off. I'll bring a branch cutter in a minute and remove those. But so light pruning literally means doing this. It's a rather delicate operation because you've got to make sure you're doing the right thing. Okay, so that is light pruning. So this could be wired a little. I'll show you the process on just this branch. Okay, I'm not going to look at that branch. Now some of these like sucker shoots we take off. Okay, over here also I will do a bit of light pruning like so. Take that off. Now this branch here, if you look at it from this view, you see it's extra long. You see how vigorous the tree is. If you leave it to grow, it'll get completely out of shape. So I will pull it back to the original pad. So the pad, if you come here, look from here, this pad formation ends here. So I should really take that off. All that's taken off. This is not hard pruning. It's just tidying this tree up. And by the way, because Satsuki is such a rare plant, they strike from cuttings very easily. You can either take a heel cutting like that and plant it, or you can take this year's growth. This is all grown in the last two weeks. You can take that and plant that. So how many plants will you get from this? Lots of plants. So we're going to keep this because we propagate young azaleas because a lot of people like the young azaleas to buy. So we'll keep that. So you see how this pad has been shaped. Now these are also a bit long. So I'm taking the shoots off. And the shoots are no more than like two millimeter thick, really thin. But that one was like five millimeter thick. See, that also we're taking. So it's okay to prune leaving a shoot like this because it will bud. Don't worry about that, it will bud. Unlike pines and junipers, no pines really, where you have to leave a bit of green to pull the sap, azaleas are like semi deciduous, they are semi evergreen if you want to refer it in that way. They will sprout from old wood. I usually, after doing this jet with a hose pipe, jet the water to get some of these dead flowers off. It also cleans the dust off. So I'm continuing to concentrate on this pad. And you see sometimes when the branches, all plants, irrespective of whether they're pines, satsukis, maples or whatever, they have a tendency to spring upward. You can see all these branches springing upward. So you need to control that. We need to keep it flat if you want to maintain it perfect. Now this is also a rogue branch. They're so vigorous. I look at that branch. This is going in the wrong place. I'll take that off. This will be used for cuttings. This will be, you see on all these suckers, these we call suckers. If you let it grow, it'll take away all the energy from the tree. But when they're developing in the Japanese nurseries, they encourage a lot of these side shoots to grow because these side shoots help to thicken the trunk. They're what we call sacrificial. So even though they're thin, they're sacrificial. So I've made this very nice and clean like that. So you can tidy this up as well. I still remember when I used to go to Japan in the late 80s, early 90s, my wife and I were taken to some of these really uh, top class Satsuki Azalea nurseries. And over there they had Satsukis which were selling at quarter million dollars. Quarter million dollar for one Satsuki Azalea. I don't know what was so special about it. I think he was trying to impress me probably. And the way they grew it, after flowering, they repot in the um, rainy season of July and then they grow in, in these polytunnels which are really really hot. The temperature in those polytunnels must be like 40 to 45 degrees centigrade and they apparently make a lot of growth. So this one because it's springing up I will do a little bit of wiring. 
so one of the reasons why we don't do too much is because we are essentially wanting to sell these plants on and if you do too much to the tree or prune too hard it becomes unsaleable for at least one or two years so with commercial nurseries there's always a balance to be struck between how much you do for the longer term but it will make the marketing of that tree or the selling of that tree much more difficult because when customers come to the nursery they see oh, a tree which has been so heavily pruned it doesn't look so nice but they don't see that it's being done for the longer term so i hope this wire will be strong enough i'm going to wire this down as well the basic shape of most of these trees, especially the S-shaped trunk, is done when the azaleas are very, very thin. No more than, say, like quarter inch, which is what, about 12 millimeter? Uh, 12 cent, uh, yeah, 12 millimeter, 12 mil. So pressing this down. Now this one I want to take up to here. Be warned, Satsuki azaleas are very brittle, very, very brittle, more brittle than maples. So if you try to be too aggressive in bending, you will snap the branches. Very prone to snapping. Notice that there's a branch here which is hanging downwards. You see this branch here hanging downwards. This is spoiling the pad, so you got to bite the bullet and take it off. I know that not many people have Satsuki azaleas because it's a very specialist tree. But for those of you who have it, this is how you do it. Bear in mind that the Satsuki is slightly different from the ordinary spring flowering azalea. They are different because they flower much later. I will explain in another program the history and the origins of Satsuki because there's a lot of things that you need to learn about that and there is not a lot of knowledge that exists about Satsukis. So anything springing upward, even that one needs to be wire flat because it's springing upwards, you see? So again, because they're left to their own devices, they spring up, but you don't want that. So you want to take that down as well. Let me get another grid of wire. The other thing about Satsuki azaleas is that they attract a lot of bees. In fact, one of the Satsuki growers that we used to visit in Japan was a beekeeper because the Satsukis are so prolific in flowering that it's swarming with bees. Okay, so I wired that down to form the pad. So this is how generally you've got to literally go through all the trees like this. And of course, because in Japan it's so competitive, they have these competitions where Satsuki growers show off their trees. You want it perfect. So this is what you have to do to get that pad perfect. So this is just one pad. I haven't done the whole tree. 
I will gradually go through the trees. So looking at this, this is another rogue branch. That shouldn't be there. If I wanted a new branch, I'll develop it. But I think that tree doesn't need this one. So I take this off as well. And this is growing downwards. So I take this off. These are all these rogue little shoots. So we take these off. And this is also a downward pointing branch. Now this one is a bit weak. Let's hope it recovers. But I don't think you need this, but again, we can tidy it up. You do get some twigs and branches dying, so don't worry about that. If they are dying or dead, you just remove it. But you need to seal it. I know that I've mentioned before this business about repotting. In Japan, satsuki azaleas are traditionally repotted in the uh, period after flowering. And after flowering is the rainy season. Those of you who have been to central Japan will know that from mid-June, from about the 15th of June, the rainy season starts. And that's when you get torrential rain. And can you imagine, in that torrential rain, the atmosphere is so humid and close that whatever you do to the azaleas, if you repot it then, you get away with it. So, I don't know how they have devised a method for repotting after flowering, but I also did question this business about repotting after flowering with one of the satsuki growers in Japan many years ago when I used to visit regularly. And I told him that in England you don't get that rainy season, it's very dry. So he said then straight away he told me that is not the best time to um, repot azalea. So I said how about if we do it the traditional time in February. He said that is very good because they also do it. When they do heavy structural pruning and lifting the trees out of the ground that is done in February time. So to do that in February is not wrong. So the Japanese grower did confirm to me that that is an acceptable time for repotting azaleas, that is outside Japan. So don't be faced when people tell you that you can't repot outside the after flowering period in July. So I still reckon that in the West, in the Western Hemisphere, repotting azaleas immediately after flowering, that means you're waiting till July, is not a good idea. It's not a good idea. There's a bit of green on this. Can you see the little leaves coming there? So that is alive. So I'm not pruning that branch off. It will shoot new twigs. I could take that branch off because it's following the, the look there. I could saw it off. So I will just do a bit of rough pruning if you come on this side again look at this one this is another rogue shoot you see how this is grown like that this has been allowed to grow only in the last year if you neglect it for one year this is what happens so the light pruning is normally done every I would say every year the light pruning or every two years you can do light pruning but the heavy pruning is normally done every third year so you do the light pruning for two years and then the third year you go back to the heavy pruning where you structure the tree. That means you take a lot of the small shoots off and also heavy branches where they need to be taken off. Now this one is what we call an unwanted shoot growing in the wrong place. So we take that off. More cuttings for me. And that also is going upwards. But if I wanted to, I can wire it into a branch in that position. To create a new branch so you don't always remove everything that could be used as a new branch this way so I can wire that there because I don't want to spend too too long like I would really have to be spending hours and hours I'm just showing you basically the theory of it and just confining myself to one or two pads to show you how it is done
exactly that's also shooting upwards so I can either prune but it's going the wrong way it's kicking back on itself so that comes off and all these little suckers like that comes off that's a live branch I'll continue to grow it and after pruning the main thing is to feed it heavily the feeding will encourage a lot of new growth so again mainly taking off these suckers from the trunk Anything pointing downwards is taken off. So I will show you when this is finished. So this is just deadheading again. So you can see we've deadheaded and given it a light prune. Now this branch I didn't want to cut off, but I may want to bring it down like that. So it makes it a little more full, <laughs> makes it easier to market and sell. So it has a nice rounded crown. This branch is a bit long. Okay, I can probably take this off over here. And maybe these shoots I can prune back here. I can prune lightly the top. I may sacrifice some flowers, but we are getting more or less the structure. So it's halfway between light and heavy pruning. I haven't removed any heavy branches, but I've made a light pruning to this tree. Uh, as I said, we don't repot our trees on our nursery after flowering because we don't believe the UK has the right climate for repotting after flowering. I still believe it's best done in Japan. We repot ours in February. Sure now, hang on. So let me just show you the final process which is feeding the tree. You notice I'm scratching the surface here. By scratching the surface, it lets the fertilizer penetrate more easily. So I will show you the types of fertilizer we use. This is a European type fertilizer. This is general tree fertilizer. It's called Vitex Q4. That's the amount I spread. Well, I got a handful. I spread it in some of these trees. Feeding is very important. You won't get much growth if you don't feed it heavily. So that's the feeding. Another very good fertilizer, these Japanese fertilizers, is a rapeseed fertilizer. So the pellets are the size of a small marble. So on a tree like that, you can put like 20 or 30 pellets, spread it on the surface. You can either just spread it, or if you didn't want the bother of spreading it, because if you leave it complete, the birds are very fond of pecking it, and the birds will steal the pellets. So rather than leave it whole on the surface like that, we prefer to soak it in a bowl of water, like cereals, and let it melt down. And when it becomes a paste, you smear the paste on the surface. So if you smear the paste on the surface, again, it goes into the tree much quicker. So feeding is absolutely essential after the uh, pruning has been done. So we keep it under cover here in semi-shade conditions, and hopefully the tree will generate a lot of new growth. So this is what we have to do to all the trees. I will show you another tree that we have to do a little more. And I'll just remove this and show so you. While I've been doing this, Satsuki, sorry I had to interrupt, but uh, I always love welcoming my YouTube followers. And this Henry and Kim, they've just done a workshop with Padma Priya. So that's Padma Priya there. <laughs> So, did you enjoy the class and you enjoy the nursery? You yes, have not been here much. before? It's the first time. Beautiful, isn't huh? it? And he's so knowledgeable with everything. Okay, very good. And that's really, nice really to know. Fun. That's nice really to know. Fun. Good. Yeah. Okay. So, no. stick around, you know, can see what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. All right. Thank you. These are Azaleas. Okay. Thank you so much. Great. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Okay, and you. Now, this Satsuki looks nice and green. So, what we've done is we've just deadheaded it after flowering. If you look closely, we literally snipped off the spent flowers. So we snipped them off. But as I said, we don't like to do too much heavy pruning because it makes the tree unsaleable. So we've just done very light pruning, very, very light pruning. Now, also, I noticed that you can't see the trunk. Now, what's happening here, these are what we call the suckers. These are ideal for making cuttings, you know. 
So all this growth is only in the last year. We didn't cut it off last year for a good reason. It's not out of sheer laziness, but we grow them so that we use it for producing cuttings the next year. So we produce a lot of these young Satsuki azalea cuttings from this sort of material. So. And you wait a minute, we will show you all these beautiful trunk base of the Nibari here. So this has served a purpose. It has helped to thicken the trunk, although these branches are small. Apparently the Japanese growers say that even if you leave small branches like this, they all help to thicken the trunk. So this business of the sacrificial works even with small branches like this. So it's not to be sneezed at. So this is all my cutting material, which was deliberately grown so that we can make young plants from it. Look at that beautiful base there. So this is only one year's growth, last year's growth. So you can see how prolific Satsukis are. Also, if you don't remove it, you can get the top dying. Now let me, if you come around here, please. Agatha, we will. There's more sucker material. I call it suckers because anything growing from the base is called suckers. You see the leaves from last year. Now a lot of people ask me, are Satsukis deciduous or evergreen? I would say it is semi-evergreen. They keep most of the leaves, but they do lose the old foliage, the foliage from the previous year. Previous year's foliage is shed, obviously, because no leaves stay on the tree forever. So even at evergreen trees, you don't get leaves staying on that tree forever in a day. So we're getting back to the trunk, showing you this gorgeous trunk. And I noticed that this branch here is sticking back to this side. So I can put a piece of wire and grow it out like this, like so. So I will do that as well. So this is the time, best time to take the opportunity to correct any faults that you see. So let me find the perfect thickness of wire. I'm just wiring it to the other end. So anchoring the wire. So one end to this end. As I said, you've got to be very careful not to break the branch. You see, so I've taken that branch out this way. This is the back anyway. But this year I won't give it a heavy prune. I'm just going to leave it to grow like this. And as always, I should feed it heavily. If we come again from the front, come to the front, we will just tidy up a little more. There's this odd little dead branch there. That one I'll let grow. This also is not out of place. I'll let it grow there. There are one or two branches popping up, growing straight up like that. I don't want. I can take the pads back a little bit, like so, and then maintain a more conical shape so that it doesn't lose the conical shape, dome shape. So that is the tree done. So, again, you don't have to repot this every other year. I would prefer to do it every maybe four years. Any of these suckers should be removed. And then I will again put some of my this type of fertilizer. 
and this tree will grow like crazy. So that's how you prune these azaleas. So I hope that this gives you a good idea as to what we do with azaleas after flowering. So more than just deadheading, a little more than just deadheading. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you.